Is police misconduct kept secret in New Mexico? A list of police reforms the governor has said she supports includes making an officer's disciplinary history public. Because as News 13's Jose Mitri shows you on special assignment, if an officer breaks the rules in New Mexico right now, you may not find out about it. Protests this year have renewed a push for police reforms focused on accountability and transparency. Well, I think we've seen across the country and certainly here in New Mexico that public trust around our police departments has eroded. It's true that uh, the relationship between law enforcement and, and the communities we serve right now uh, is strained for obvious reasons. In response, Governor Michelle Lujan Grisham created the Council for Racial Justice and threw her support behind legislative proposals like making police disciplinary history a matter of public record. Every single thing has to be on the table. Right now, each law enforcement agency in New Mexico can interpret the state's public records law differently. For instance, on special assignment, KRQE has obtained stacks of records detailing internal affairs investigations and disciplinary records of officers with the Albuquerque Police Department. But many other departments in the state will not let the public see those records. This is the denial the city of Belen sent us, refusing to release records after a Belen police officer was investigated twice in July for his conduct. In Santa Fe, the Santa Fe reporter is suing the police department over its policy to keep disciplinary records secret. And while investigating a tip about a New Mexico state police officer, we learned they also have a policy of refusing to release officers disciplinary records. So that means you may never hear about alleged misconduct unless an officer is charged criminally, which is very rare, or unless someone sues them in civil court, like in this case. <laughs> This video surfaced after DWI suspect Ryan Cordova in cuffs there sued this state police officer, Peter Romero, in February. But as far as whether Officer Romero broke any department policies or was disciplined, state police won't say. The incident happened last year. It went public this year, and about a month later, Romero quietly retired. Transparency should be the policy. There's no reason that if someone signs up to protect and serve a community that if they're disciplined, that somehow becomes a secret that they can keep. Civil rights attorney Shannon Kennedy has taken the Department of Public Safety, or DPS, which oversees New Mexico State Police, to court over police records, winning a case this year that went all the way up to the state Supreme Court. The Department of Public Safety, State Police, has been an entity that has been very spotty in terms of responses to public records requests. We talked to Tim Johnson about this. He was Governor Lujan Grisham's state police chief at the time, and she's since promoted him to interim secretary of DPS. As an agency, uh, we try to be as transparent as we possibly can. I lean on our lawyers, uh, DPS lawyers, uh, for advice on this, and, and I'm told we are following the policy and, and, and the law. State law doesn't make it illegal to release disciplinary records. Like I mentioned before, APD already releases them. But police departments that choose to keep them private cite an exception in the state's open records law. It says letters or memorandums, which are matters of opinion and personnel files, are exempt. And a 1977 state Supreme Court ruling took it a step further, specifically saying disciplinary action and other, quote, matters of opinion can be withheld, saying the legislature anticipated there could be documents concerning disciplinary action that might have no foundation in fact. But what about when an investigation does find that the facts show an officer violated department policy? You said, you know, it's important to hold officers accountable. Uh, you feel like your department is pretty transparent. So how is the public supposed to know that your actions are in line with your words, that you are holding your officers accountable if that process is not public? I think that's an excellent question. And uh, uh, I could... You know, the only thing I could say at this point is I could assure them that we are holding our officers accountable and that we do take every complaint, every issue that comes to this office, to this department very seriously. He says he can understand both sides of the issue here. As an agency head, I can understand why some of that stuff is confidential to ensure that uh, uh, the employee employer relationship is good. For instance, some critics worry opening up an officer's personnel file could harm someone's reputation over frivolous infractions 
or be used unfairly to discredit officers who have to be trusted to testify as witnesses in court. And there's a concern for some that with so much pressure and scrutiny, who would even want to be a police officer? But for Johnson's part, he says he's not against reform. I also understand uh, if the public who we serve uh, wants that changed uh, so that they can know uh, what their officers have done, uh, we work for them. And uh, through the legislature, um, that could be changed. Changed through the legislature, he notes. So despite the largest police department in the state, APD, already releasing disciplinary records, other departments may not follow suit unless state law is changed to require it. The public will get the policing they, they demand. On special assignment, Liz Amy Tree, KRQE News 13. In 2015, public radio station WNYC found disciplinary records were completely open in 12 states. Now that number seems to be growing with states like New York and New Jersey moving to make those records public this year.